Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a burn down chart. Now, burn down chart is probably common in the agile software development uh, domain. It's a chart that helps you display the remaining efforts uh, for a given period of time. So agile development is focused on rapid development of uh, software or hardware projects. Uh, but when you think about it, it's also a great project management tool to help you understand uh, when you are performing some particular task or iterating on some task, uh, how much time do you have to complete it and are you behind schedule or are you ahead of schedule. So here we're, what we're going to concentrate on is creating a basic burn down chart. So with the basic burn down chart we have very, really two series of data. One is your estimated hours. So we have this red line here which is basically our estimated hours that we think something's going to be completed at. It's going to start at the hours of all the combined tasks that it's going to take to complete it and eventually go down to zero. So that's that straight linear line. Now this blue line is the actual hour. So this gets charted out um, for each time period. Uh, how much task is left, how much of the effort is left, and this also has a downward trajectory, but it can go below the estimated remaining hours or above it. So when it goes below the estimated hours, basically that is telling us that the project is ahead of schedule. There's less work left than originally predicted. However, if the line is above, if the actual remaining hours is above the estimated remaining hours, that means the project is behind schedule. There's more work that's left than originally predicted. So how do we come up with a chart like this? Um, let me go ahead and go into sheet one over here and I'll show you. So basically that chart was created with these two rows. So we had our actual remaining hours and our estimated remaining hours. So in the most basic part, what we're talking about is the tasks that are going to occur in a time frame. So I'm going to use five days as an example. So basically this, so these are a series of tasks that have to be completed within five days. And through some estimation, we are allocating uh, certain hours to complete these tasks. So task one is going to take eight hours, task two is also going to take eight hours, and all the way up to task eight where it takes eight hours. So we have to go ahead and add those up and those will give us our estimated hours. So this is basically the sum of our eight tasks here. Now for when we're starting it off, we're also going to assume that the actual remaining hours when we start is going to be the same, uh, the, 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 co the summation of those hours. Now when we go on to the additional the days, like day five, four, three, two, and we're basically counting down from the fifth day to the first day, what we want to go is down to zero. And for each day, what we're going to assume is there's an equal amount of time that uh, gets remained. So, so the calculations here, ba basically this is indicating uh, there, there's going to be an equal space uh, of when the estimated remaining hours are going to be spent. So as each day goes by, it's going to be about 10.8 hours that we're assuming these tasks are going to uh, be spent. So 54 to 43.2 to 32.4, uh, those are basically a difference of 10.8. So eventually we'll get down to zero. So that's what gives us that linear line that goes all the way down from the top left to the bottom right. Now for the actual hours remaining, what we're talking about here is once we start to go into each day and at the end of the day, we're going to allocate how, many how much time that we spent for each particular task. What this particular row is, is it's going to be the difference between the actual hours remaining from the previous day, in this case it's going to be just the start, minus the uh, hours that were spent. So that's going to tell us what are the actual hours remaining. Uh, so. So as we go through the additional days, it's going to go and find a difference from the previous day uh, and minus that from the uh, sum of all the uh, tasks that were uh, taken into account for that day. So you notice here, maybe in this case, you notice that there was a lot of front end work done on day one or, or the fifth day if we wanted to go move backwards. So maybe there was some thought that day four and day three, those could be relaxed up a bit and free up resources to work on something else. And that's why there is zero here. And we noticed that there is no uh, change in the numbers here. And then at this point on day two and day one, that's when the activity came back into uh, this particular iteration of projects or, or tasks to try to complete it. So if we wanted to go ahead and create this particular chart, what we can do is we can select uh, these range of cells, go under insert, 
and go under and insert a line chart. So if we insert a line chart, we're going to have this particular chart here. And it's very similar to the one I showed earlier. Let me go ahead and move the chart over here and maybe give myself a little bit, move it over here a little bit, give myself some room here. And so now we notice that we have some numbers here that we really didn't have any information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select the data. I'm just going to select the chart here and just go ahead and under the design tab, under the data group, go ahead and click select data and kind of puts the appropriate labels for each of these series and labels. So for series one, I'll go ahead and click edit and let me see where it's pulling it from. So it's pulling from C11. So that is this row. So this is going to be the actual remaining hours. So let me give it its proper series name, which is this one. Go ahead and click OK. And then series two is going to be the estimated. So I'm going to go click that and click edit. And for the series name, click on the estimated hours remaining. So that has selected that correctly. Let me go ahead and move this up here to get out of the way. So our actual remaining, our estimated hours should be that straight line and our actual should be the not so straight line. So if we go and want to add the labels for this, instead of having one, two, three, we want to have it the hours spent five, four, three, two, one. This is the horizontal category axis. I'll go ahead and click edit and for the label range, let me go ahead and select these five cells. So once that's selected, it puts it here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and click OK to get out of that. And this legend here is taking up too much room, so I'm going to want to move it down to the bottom here. So I'm going to go to Layout here and click on Legend and have the legend show up at the bottom. So now we have more room here. So now if you notice that I pretty much have my burn down chart. Uh, I can just go ahead and just format it and make it look a little bit nicer to view. Go ahead and click on these vertical lines and press delete because I don't want those to show up there. And so now you notice that the burn down chart shows the example of where we're at. So we can probably use this as a day-to-day a -day kind of project management tool. Let's say for example uh, over here on uh, day one, the last day, we'll go ahead and delete that. Let me go ahead and just uh, copy that first and then I'll go ahead and delete it. And you'll notice that now it's kind of gone. Uh, that thing hasn't been charted here. Or if I can just select this. The reason why it's out here is because now it thinks it's zero. Let me go ahead and select that line. And let me go ahead and move that or just kind of delete that so it doesn't show up anymore. So that's gone. And if we were charting this on day two and we're looking at this particular gap between the estimated and the actual. We'll notice that now, hey, this, this looks like we are behind schedule. We want to kind of move it back into uh, a line here. So if that was the case, maybe we we'll start to uh, put some pressure onto the team to spend more time to get this thing done. So let's say that you know we want to kind of uh, get our resources, our teams back into play and have them finish the hours. Maybe this, maybe this needs two hours to finish. Uh, that needs an additional hour. Uh, this one's okay. That doesn't need any more hours. This one needs one hour. This one needs one hour. This one needs three hours. This one needs two hours. And this one needs one hour. And let me go ahead and click, move this fill handle here over to the left here. It's going to copy the formula. And now you notice that that is available there. So you notice if I click into the chart here, uh, let's see, the, this line has taken into account that uh, this row is selected. And you can't really see what happened here because the red is over over on top. And if I click on here and just press 0 and press Enter, you now you notice that the line has moved a little bit over there. So it tells you that uh, this line actually when we got down to uh, day 1. At the end of day 1, we have met our criteria. If I can make that back into a 1, we have uh, met our criteria. And we are estimated and actual remaining hours are the same. So this is the way that we can create a, a basic burn down chart. Uh, some of them can get a little bit more complex, but uh, this is basically telling us as a project management tool. So this is basically telling us if we're ahead of schedule or we're behind schedule and it gives us a day to day view so we can adjust things or adjust our resources to complete certain tasks. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.